C T T B Music Podcast. Hey, we're actually recording this week. Oh, good, good, good. You so I can say something. Yeah, you can say you can say something. I won't waste um, my breath. Other things, and yeah, and some 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 of it will hopefully make coherent sense. Yeah, uh, it's the uh, well, last time we did this. It was kind of summer. It was. It's definitely autumn now. It's kind of winter, <laughs> right oh. now. But yes, I know what you mean. Uh, anyway, uh, it's the seasons. It is the season to be dancing. Yep. And we are back with Apex Twin, uh, blah, 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 blah. the Wan McLean, Juan Bank, McLean Banks, Death from Above, nineteen seventy nine, Ryan Adams, and Black Moth. So, without further ado, <laughs> we shall get on to the sixth Apex Twin album, and his first in Ooh, a long, a long, long time, long, long time. Yeah, we're going back to the days of Come to Daddy, I think. Uh yeah. Mm. Yes, it's been a, it's been a while since uh, Mr. James yeah. released a record. Mm. Um but he's back with uh, an album full of uh, catchy tight horned ditties. <laughs> it's indeed. I tell you what, this podcast is gonna be twice as long and that's just gonna be for reviewing this first album. Yeah, just to replace the tr- <laughs> which, I really like the track. <laughs> Mix. <laughs> yeah, well <laughs> go on, you can go first. Oh thanks. <laughs> Right, okay. The Apex Twin, new album, Syro. Uh, <laughs> at least he kept that simple. Um, yeah, I, I really like this album. Yeah? It was a grower. Uh, it's, it's definitely it's a, a grower. A, I, mean, yeah. I think it's a com- as a, as a complete, um, as a complete art, um, form or a complete work, um, I think it's, I think it's a really good album. It, it stands up. Um, you know, it's, it's consistently good throughout. Um, I have to admit there were certain tracks I preferred yeah um, and, and and again trying to get around this whole uh, conundrum over the um, the, uh, the track listing the names uh, which um, for, 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 the view, for the viewers for the listeners that haven't 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 seen the album um, resemble sort of file names almost yeah uh, in terms of you know um, computer programming and so on um, I have to say, I think I think every I had this every other rule throughout this album. So, so the first the first track, Mini Pop sixty seven, yep. um, I liked Christmas Eve T ten, yeah, it was okay, jolly enough. And then Product twenty nine, track three, um, I liked a lot, uh, and so on. And that, yeah. that that pattern seemed to work for me throughout <laughs> the album. It's like the every other track rule. Um, it's a, a classic mix of of modern. I say modern day yeah modern day electronic dance music um instrumental electronic music of, of the nature of which we've heard a lot more of recently from the likes of Trent Reznor and so on yes um I think that there was the, the, it's funny you mentioned that because there were, there were several moments on this when I was just thinking oh yeah Trent's got another soundtrack album out hasn't he <laughs> okay he was reminded you <laughs> yeah there Remind- was lots of <laughs> beep, 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 beeps in you know but I think the difference here is is it's it's a lot more upbeat than I was expecting as well. If yeah, that makes sense, because there's lots of beats, but they were particularly upbeat, <laughs> upbeat beats. Uh, you know, I, I think I was going to be good. I was expecting more of a techno dirge, um, and yeah, there was elements of that, and certainly there's some old school techno in here as well. I think it was one one hundred and eighty dB, and one of the later tracks was yeah, with Papa T four. Yeah, 180 dB, as you say, it's got a techno drum and bass type yeah, thing. Proper. Actually, actually, one of my favourite tracks. Yes, album, definitely. Uh, one of the, sh- the shorter ones, too. <laughs> yes. So, um, you know, there's some proper drum and bass, some proper old school tech- 90s techno in there, um, akin to a, a Prodigy remix or something. You know, it was proper, proper old school. Um, so, yeah, very enjoyable album. Um, worth the repeat listening. And to close it all off... Um, a rather nice ba- ballad <laughs> <laughs> instrumental yeah. What you mean? yeah it's just yeah. him on the piano You've got him on piano but akin to some of the remix work he did with the aforementioned Trent Reznor as well back in the 90s back in the day so uh, yeah all in all I like that yeah um, what was your favourite track <laughs> name it <laughs> uh, 
Actually, Circlant 6A, open brackets 141.98, close brackets, Scryo Bonkers Mix, one of my favourites. <laughs> Which comes I after 180 dB. <laughs> I, I prefer Circle on T14. <laughs> well, <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. I, I think I think this is. I mean, I, was, I quite liked. I mean, I remember back many many moons ago. So back in the early 90s, my, it was my brother that actually first um, pointed me in the direction of Aphex Twin, and he had come across him on uh, Radio Three. Right. <laughs> As you do. Gosh. Um, for anyone listening who's not aware of what Radio 3 is, Radio 3 plays <laughs> classical music. <laughs> um, but they used, to have, they used to have a programme on um, back in late 80s, early 90s, not sure how long it went on for, called Mixing It, right. which used to just uh, do experimental music of various different kinds. And um, he got played on there a few times. My brother heard that and went, oh, I really like that. And then sent me, I think, sent me, I think uh, ambient, one of the ambient works. I think the first Ambient Works album, which I really liked, and yeah, it was it was good. And this this sounds similar in lots of ways. And it's a, it's one of those classic um, damned if you do, damned if you don't kind of things. Because I think in in many ways this album could have quite easily come out at any point between now and nineteen ninety, going, going 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 backwards. Yeah. Um, but then again. As he himself says, he's got barrel loads of stuff just sitting around that he hasn't done stuff with, done stuff with, and released. It's quite, it's quite possible that quite a lot of this stuff actually exists from that particular point in time. Um, but still, as you say, it's it's enjoyable. It's enjoyable, um, but it pays to listen to it several times. Um, it has to be said during the few times I was playing music. Um, to prepare for this podcast during the last couple of weeks in the household this one was not a big favourite <laughs> really? yeah oddly, oddly enough requests to turn this off came, came much quicker than anything else in the podcast yeah um, for that reason I think you really need to kind of live with this record and it is lots of beep boop 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 yeah. boop 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 as well as uh, genuinely interesting musical passages. Yes, no, I agree. Uh, it's it's one to listen to on your own. Yes. <laughs> oh, it's interesting. You mentioned I think you mentioned product twenty nine as one of your tracks that you yes. like. Because seamlessly moving into the next record, Ooh. I actually thought that wouldn't. That's the one track on this album that wouldn't have felt that out of place on the next album. Ah, I see what you're saying. Uh, the next yeah. album which is the Juan McLean in a dream uh, this is uh, John McLean better known by the stage name Juan McLean uh, and this time around joined by former LCD sound system member Nancy Wang um, and this is kind of tonight we're going to party like it's 1980 really isn't it <laughs> yes. uh, uh, it's disco time oh, very much so yeah let's get our Giorgio Moroder and Cheek records out again <laughs> uh, you know it's like we're going back to a Daft Punk last year yeah but, but it's 2013 all over yes, again <laughs> but, with, but without your man yeah um and I have to confess a bit like the first time I like this album much more than I expected to mm. um I wasn't sure on the first couple of listens, but then it kind of clicked with me, and half the record really got under my skin. And the opening track combines disco along with some kind of great, kind of um, almost kind of late seventies guitar riffage, uh, so right up my kind of street. And then you've got some uh, great kind of pop loveliness with uh, in the middle of the album with uh, "Running Back to You" and "I've Waited So Long," which I was singing for most of last week. Yeah. Um, and the last track is also very nice for a long, long track it's kind of a duet kind of thing it's kind of ballady type thing but uh, someone never said I love which I really liked sadly there's a couple of bits of kind of early 90s dance rubbish in here as well Here I Am the second track particularly um, and a couple of other things that didn't really charm up particularly didn't grab me either, either but overall there was more on this Mm. That was thumbs up than thumbs down, and I was actually pleasantly surprised. Yeah, it, um, I, I I had a few reverse turns on the reviewing of this podcast. So listen to this album the first time, loved it. Listen to it second time, yeah, I wasn't so sure. 
mm. anymore. But then repeated listen, yeah, it, it it started to grow back on me. I hear exactly what you're saying around the sort of, as you call it, 90s dance rubbish. Um, <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> there's, some, there's some classic Happy House. I think I think it's on that second track. Yeah. Um, yeah, it doesn't sit so well with the rest of the record. No, it, just, it doesn't. It feels very out of place. With yeah, the it really does. And even with his almost hot chip s vocals once or twice, um, it just doesn't sit so well. Um, it is best when it's when it's sort of clearly charged with the 1980s. Um, I'm using observation I made. You were were a runaway. I thought the um, the, the couple at the start of that, the start of the verse, was very much Papa don't preach. Yes. Na, 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 yes. Na, na, yeah. Na, na. Absolutely. Na, 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 na. Yeah. Just yeah. that bit. Um, you know, it's, it's so it's a, very much a Madonna esque um, vocals. Not all the time. Not all the time. Just sometimes I felt that Madonna was clearly an influence as well. Yeah, I had that, and also mentioned mention that on on a couple of the tra tracks, it was almost like not only Madonna, but kind of Human League. Mm. It was so, so a couple of these tracks sounded like they could almost have been kind of remixes of Human League tracks yeah. done more da more dancey if you know what I mean sort of sampled and then redone yeah, yeah. no exactly I hear that yeah so um, you know, it's, uh, again um, completely different of course to the previous album the FX Twin album <laughs> obviously yeah um, this is far more straight ahead this dance is far music. more straight ahead dance music but, but um, some really interesting use of, of, of 80s style synth pop that, that we've not heard for quite some time no uh, actually, I forgot after that saying Charlotte didn't do much. The song Charlotte didn't do much short for me. I suddenly, suddenly reminded by the by seeing a note that I'd written that that what it did remind me of, of musically was Gold by Spando Valley. <laughs> yes. <laughs> kind of thing going on. Yeah. But yeah, uh, for for a band I hadn't heard of. Yeah. No, um, no, no quite yeah, surprised. Quite good. Quite surprised. Though, and completely not what I expected. So, moving on to the third album, which is Banks Goddess uh, debut album uh, from was she the was she the tip from the BBC? She was one of the tips. I can't remember if she was the lead tip. I think she might have been. Why is she? Okay. Or was she number two? I can't. I, I remember I preferred her to some of the others we listened to. Yeah. Uh, anyway, she was in, she was definitely one of the. <laughs> it shows you how much we know. We, know. we yeah. did that how much podcast how long ago. Keep attention and, to what we do. Yeah. Don't even research our own past podcasts. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, anyway, she's this is a this is a debut album. She's from uh, uh, America, from Los Angeles, I believe. Although she just spent quite a bit of time over here. Yeah, you can tell. Mm. Musically, I mean, I'll clarify elaborate. that. In a, I'll, on, I'll elaborate, elaborate in a minute. No, now carry on. Um. Yeah, it's. Oh, I can hear sounds. Sounds of the studio in the background. Uh, for me, this is one of those records that um, starts off, and I think I, I actually really like, I actually really like her voice, and I, I like the whole kind of down, slow tempo, chill out R and B kind of thing. The, kind yes. of, the whole concept of the groove of it, you know. And it was interesting to see Jamie Woon as a co-writer on one of the tracks because there is very much a kind of him and James Blake mm. feel to mm. um, this. So it's therefore a shame that for me the filler clearly overwhelms the killer on mm. this this record. Uh, it is a shame because I think the killer for me is very good. So begging the thread, waiting game, and you should know where I'm coming from. I think are three absolutely outstanding tracks. But for me, the rest of the album doesn't really match up to the strength of those songs. Yeah. Um, there is actually a track on the extended version of the album um, before I ever met you, which I'd also have brought into the main album. If it was a bit of it had been me. Um, what is quite surprising is that uh, there are parts of it where it's actually reminiscent of Kate Bush almost. So on tracks like Drowning and uh, I think Under the Table, there is uh, that kind of Bush-esque mm. element, even though the songs aren't as good as a Kate Bush track. Um, so I, a lot of promise. And like I said, when she's good, uh, I think it's very good, but just too much filler for me. Yeah, I agree. Um, I agree again. Um, yes, uh, when it's when she's good, she's excellent. Uh, I uh, elaborating. I do think it has a quite a cool urban vibe to it that is very much um, UK driven R and B. Yeah. In terms of some of the some of the the, the style of the songwriting and the and the music. 
Um, so that's that's that point I was coming from. That was the point I was trying to make. <laughs> Same difference. I'm getting it out. Um, I, I where this album is is great it is it does something interesting with R and B. Um, we reviewed an album last podcast uh, where said artist was trying to recreate a soundscape on each and every track. Yes. Or some some press release not yes. naffness. Um, I think this album actually succeeds in doing that and and doing it well. Um, but would agree with you entirely that standout track for me early on was Waiting Game I think that's the moment for me when this album really clicked into place I thought the first couple of tracks were alright yeah, but then it fine. really clicked into place with Waiting Game I thought I thought the songwriting the singing and, and everything about this track is perfect it's just stunning it just grabbed me you know the way that, that, that a really good song grabs you um, so again it's such a shame that thereafter um, those moment, those those moments, <laughs> those, those, moments. Moments, those moments even were fewer and, and, and further between. Um, I, th- I think I got uh, no pun intended um, stuck with stick. Um, and somewhere in the middle of the album, uh, it, it did. I did start to. It starts to feel like a long record. It starts it? to feel like a long record. Your your attention starts to 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 wane. Begging for thread obviously pulls you back in, uh, but again. You know, the more you, and, it, and I think it does pick up again towards the end of the album as well. I think I think there's a natural end to the album somewhere around. I can't remember if it's a change or someone new. It's a, mm. sort of a very acoustic, uh, almost a cappella. Yeah, song. yeah. There and might it, be someone new, I think. And then we get Warm Water, which was one of the tracks from the earlier. I think it was the London EP, which was the, re- the thing we we reviewed earlier this year. It was, yeah. Um, which I think again, I think Warm Water, really really cool song, um, but but seems to have sort of tagged on at the end almost like a bonus track so again something with the sequencing I've made make this point before you know it's the albums albums this is clearly one of those albums that doesn't really give in for the sequencing it's all about the track listing on iTunes blah 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 um, yes. yeah so so it's just a shame really if the production had just been tightened up a little bit um, this could have been a really good a great debut album rather than a promising debut album sound yeah sound 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 not solid sound yeah yeah so we well, I'd say we leave dance music. We, we sort of leave dance music, but move on to something that sort of, that has a dance mu- music edge to it in places. Yes. Um, and the second album from Death from Above, nineteen seventy nine. Um, first album came out in two thousand and four, and they split up shortly afterwards due to musical differences, but reformed a couple of years ago. And so it's uh, Jesse F. Keeler on bass, synths and backing vocals, and Sebastian Granger on vocals and drums. So do you want to go first on Physical World? <laughs> I'm not surprised, actually, that they split up with musical differences, because <laughs> you can hear the colli- the collision uh, points on this record. I mean, now, don't get me wrong, it's, it's, it's a good album. Um, it does rattle along at quite a pace. It does rattle along quite a um, pace. You know, and, and there's, some, there's some great rock on here as well um, equally there's some interesting almost pop music too yeah uh, in terms of in terms of some of the tracks um, I have to say this album didn't have as much of a, an impact on me as, as as the previous three albums we, we have reviewed um, although interesting you say that you sort of that collision of the synth and the, the rock um, I think it's like what the, the last track the last couple of tracks actually almost take that as a theme Gemini, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then the physical world begins with a sort of the kind of synth ditty, which is then replicated by the heavy guitar. Um, you know, so that's interesting. Um, so yeah, this is going to be my solid album choice. I think solid album choice. This is my solid album choice. But I can't say I can't say it appealed to me too. For me, it was just trying to do again too many things. Um, and I just sort of put. I found myself pulled in each direction. I didn't. I just didn't know what to think. Uh, so this, this this album didn't really work with me until today. Oh right. <laughs> and today it just kind of fell in place. And I mean, it's similar in lo- in a lot of ways to the Royal Blood album that we oh, uh, yeah. re- reviewed last last month. M- month in the sense that it's the bass and drums kind of combo, um, trying to make every- everything. And uh, it's kind of similarly brass rock. Kind of music, short, sweet, kind of thing. Yeah. And <clears throat> I think I quote because of that. I quote like liked it a bit, bit more than you, you, you do. What I was surprised didn't mention, which, which for me, the thing I thought, and again I didn't think actually until today, was just how much. At times I was thinking, yeah, I can imagine Trent Reznor 
doing this if he actually allowed himself to have fun. <laughs> yes. Now that you know, it's like everything of hesitation marks. <laughs> yeah. That could have gone on this record. Yeah, you're you're right. Actually, um, I did have that thought early on. I can't remember which track it was. Um, it, it was a bit nin, but upbeat nin at one point. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Trent Reznor really just 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 had fun and made a <laughs> more of a mainstream yeah, record. Yeah, trying to make a pop record. Yeah. yeah, which he tried, admittedly, with hesitation marks. I think to a lesser degree of success but, yeah yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah so I got I, I really like Trainwreck uh, actually the middle of the album is a bit I like best Crystal Ball and White is Red mm. and Trainwreck 1979 I all think are really, really great uh, particularly White is Red which starts off it's quite a gentle almost ballady thing that kind of that rocks out which is really really good and the, and the opening track Cheap Talk is a good kick ass yes. tune as well yes um, uh, so yeah I quite like this one because it was quite short it meant that I could easily listen to it again today mm. <laughs> ahead, of, ahead of the podcast yeah um, <coughs> which no, don't get me wrong I, I preferred it on repeat listen yeah another one of those albums I listened to it first time wasn't too keen repeat listen got better okay yeah. yeah right moving swiftly on to uh, Ryan Adams Ryan Adams 14th album by him um, wow well, I think it's probably more friendly. But, uh, <laughs> it did a good work, did the Whiskey Town things, and then it depends if you count the kind of heavy metal album he made and other things. It's That's still impressive, if it's more than 14. Yeah. Uh, he, he's quite prolific. Yeah. Or oh, oh, has been quite prolific. He's uh, slowed down a little bit, hasn't he? Uh, he's slowed down a bit, quite a bit, partly because he got ill. Uh, yeah. That's why he stopped touring a, couple, a few a few years back. He had Meniere's disease, which mm. is obviously a good involves having problems with your balance and various other things mm. um, and so he did kind of slow down a bit and kind of lose interest um, but they saw the day but I came across the thing today when he'd uh, something that allegedly he'd written summing up his previous output um, which I'll, re I'll read it because it's quite funny he says at 33 it's safe to say that most of these records blow there are three good songs maybe on gold <laughs> <laughs> Two on demolition, none on rock and roll. In brackets, awful. Don't buy it. But love is hell is good because I was high as fuck back then and it worked. All the Cardinals records have great tunes. If you're a redneck or want to be disappointed with me, buy Heartbreaker. But it's such a shite and I didn't mean a word of it. I like Cold Roses, Jacksonville City Nights, Follow the Lights, Easy Tiger, Wait for the Cardinals version, and Cardinology. Keep it real, Ryan Adams. Which kind of fits a lot. Fit. <laughs> Which, to be fair, Brilliant. having having seen him live a few week, couple of week, weeks ago, does pretty much fit in with what his set list was like. So maybe it is a genuine thing that he actually did right. Um, and I know he thinks that this album, the, the new album, is uh, if not his best, then no. certainly certainly one of his best. Oh, good for him. Um, <laughs> I certainly think it's one of his most accessible records. Yes, and and possibly his most commercial record. Yes. Um, you know, it's packed full of catchy tunes and you know, single longable material in fact mm. um, and has all the kind of elements of what what he's done over the years so you've got blues rock riffs on um, um, you know give me some good give me something good for example and I just might you've got alt country influences on stuff like let go arguably kind of just straightforward pop influences on stuff like am I safe and Kim and things like that and folk on um, things like my wrecking ball and you know, Johnny Depp plays on two tracks for cross um, um and bizarrely showed up at the gig when I saw him li li live as well really? for, the, for the encore yeah I think Johnny had had a couple of sherbets by the time he came on stage admittedly um, they're sitting around back backstage waiting waiting for your cue <laughs> well, yeah. what can the man do yeah I know probably never anyone to keep him company so I think you just you know what you do in those situations um, it's also interesting that uh, Ben Montench the uh, keyboard player from Tom Petty's band is also on this uh, album and I think on tracks such as um, uh, Trouble and Stay With Me particularly you have hints of Refugee um, from Tom Petty on Stay With Me and Tired Of Giving Up I think the kind of Tom Petty influence is also quite strong on this record and possibly yeah, it's unfair, in a way it's unfair to the other albums because I've listened to this much more than the other re records partly because <laughs> I was going to the gig and partly for other reasons um but due to that I'd say it's possibly one of my favourite records of the year so far because mm. um, I don't actually think it has a dead track on it mm. that's my opinion yeah very good 
<laughs> I hate it. No, <laughs> I'm joking. Um, I have to agree. Um, I have to agree with the specific point of yours, which is probably one of his most accessible records. Mm. I really enjoyed this record from start to finish, and and agree with that last point you made. Not a dub track on it. Um, very enjoyable record. Have to, you know, I've never been the biggest Ryan Adams fan. Yeah. Um, but this this was, you know, an absolute, you know, a pleasure to listen to. Um, not not a track that, that for me uh, felt out of place. It again rattles along at quite a pace, uh, but 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 in a good way. Yes. Um, standout tracks for me. Um, give me something good, you know, to yeah. kick kick start it. Um, again, trouble. I enjoyed. Um, feels like fire with its Noel Gallagher S backing vocal. Did you spot that? Mm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That wasn't the reason I liked it, by the way. I just spotted that, and um, and yeah, and I just might, and others, many others, um, really enjoyed, really enjoyed this album. Um, very accessible. If you're not a Ryan Adams fan, or you've never, or you want to start somewhere, I'd start with this one. Yeah, oh, I definitely agree with that. Yeah, shame I missed that gig. Yeah. <laughs> he's, play, quite, he's playing I, again in February. Is he? Yeah. Oh, well, reconsider then, because uh, yeah, that was a. Yeah, certainly if he's if he's playing this album live, it's definitely worth checking out. So we finish with uh as this year what we've tried to do this year is is to try is to try and get some metal in. Have we? Since, since since we hadn't really done a lot of metal. Have we not? <laughs> Feels like we've done a lot. We've metal. done quite a bit this year. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's just all this year. Yeah. <laughs> right. I mean we we we've done kind of random bits, you know, we've done kind of things like you'd expect us to do, so we've done kind of a Kiss album and an ACDC album and stuff like that, but we no, hadn't. Probably we, thinking of. We hadn't really gone outside of the, the mainstream. The mainstream the, metal of, of the metal world, right? Um, so we finish this month uh, with a band from Leeds, mm. um, and apparently they're a doom metal band, which um, I wouldn't have known from listening. It has to be said, I had to look it up. Uh, <laughs> Me, 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 the old metal fan as well. I'm sorry, but <laughs> since, since it started breaking down into all these kind of bizarre sub genres, I got. I wouldn't know lost. what doom metal is either. <laughs> it's this apparently. Is it? Oh yeah, right, okay. Yeah. Um, anyway, it's the second, second band, second band, second album from the band, who are fronted by a young lady called Harriet Bevan, and the album was produced by uh, the drummer from the Cave in the Bad Seeds, Jim Sclerusness. Oh yes, yeah, him, Jim. Jim, yeah, Jim, his <laughs> mates, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, it's. <laughs> I think I think her vocal's brilliant, by the way. Well, she sounds like she comes from this country, which I think is a good thing. Yeah, I think that's a good thing, and she does sound northern as well, which yeah. is which is great. Um, do metal, eh? Um, I, do, do, to be honest with you, there were times where oh, clearly it's a it's a metal album, but you know, it's it's kind of almost not heavy metal. Well, it's doom metal. I know it's doom metal, whatever that is. Um, it's, it's kind of like metal light, if I can read. You know, they make, make it sound make, make it sound hard, <laughs> but it, but it's kind of it's kind of a bit light on the metal. Um, and that's that's no bad thing because this record's actually it's all right. Um, again, not yeah. my favourite record of the podcast. No, um, by some way, as it turns out. But uh, it's it's all right. I, I, it was a decent a decent enough listen. There are a couple of good tracks on here. Um, opening track wasn't so keen on except for that brilliant line about the porker from the Daily Mail yeah. um, I, think I quite liked them all I thought that was, that was one of my standout and tracks I, but, I, but I think the sort of the, the more sort of jovial lyrics the comedy lyrics like that the little observations that run throughout this album um, sort of make it worthwhile if you know what I'm saying um, yes you mean like on Luna where it's Luna the, the yes. scratch your plates crack an egg on my breasts love um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, indeed, and um, made an impression on me. <laughs> and I quite like "Condemned to Hope" as well. Last track, uh, uh, "Condemned to Hope." Yeah, the one "Condemned to Hope." Yeah. I also quite liked uh, "Room 13. Yeah, I also thought it was a good thing. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm, I'm got so know what you mean. I mean, for me, this sounded bizarrely a bit like a bit very much new wave of British heavy metal and kind of eighties mm. kind of. Sound. It had an eighties tinge to it, um, yeah. but with a bit of added grunge. So there was, you know, the Lord. Li- you know <laughs> riff, riff wise, there were bits of kind of sound garden, sound garden rage against the machine kind of thing. Funny often tumbleweed, but it's a very rage against the machine mm. opening kind of riff. Um, but then you have a woman from Leeds singing. Yeah. <laughs> so it's rage against the machine. Yeah, rage against the machine. It's very good though. I, I, I like, as I say, I like her lyrics. I like her. 
I like not Hilar- not Hilarious so much. I like her vocals. I like her style. Yeah, you so know. do I. I actually, I actually like. She's I actually, got a great voice. I actually liked her. Perfect for this album, in fact. I liked her style more than I like the album as a whole. Yeah, said. yeah. Because so, there were quite a lot of it just kind of washed over me a bit. Sorry, Black Moth. Um, um, which is a shame because I actually wanted to like it more more than I did. I think over, over overall. Um, but as you say, it's 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 nice to hear something that sounds. Well, actually, in all music, I, I like I like hearing bands that sound British. Yeah. Or at least sound where they're from. Sound like where they're from. So, so you know, if they're from the UK and they're singing R and B, I don't want them to sound like they're someone from Los Angeles. I want them to sound like they're someone from London or yeah, they're someone from Glasgow or whatever. Yeah, it's like it's like a classic Arctic Monkeys line. You're not from New York City. You're from Rotherham. Indeed. Yeah. And th- and that's I think to be applauded. So for that, if nothing else, cheers, Black Moth. Thanks. Until next time. So, oh, wait, whoa, whoa, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, sorry, I'm, jump- I'm ahead of myself. You are. You're keen to finish. I know, it's I the wonder, excitement. I wonder why. Um, uh, so, yeah, what's your favourite? I'll take over this bit then. What's your favourite <laughs> record, Scott? Uh, it was well, clearly the Ryan Adams album. Uh, <laughs> clearly. But <laughs> All right, what's your second favourite? My second favourite. Oh, mmm... It would have to be. Uh, it would have to be Apex Twin overall. Okay. I think I'm going to give it to Apex Twin then as well. Not just because I'm agreeing with you, but because I agree with you. <laughs> Cheers. You've been listening to the CTTV Music Podcast. See how they were. See how they were. They all went up the farmer's way. Because the day they were growing up. Who knows if the last of the lives. There's the words out there.